What is up everyone, JD here. Hope you're doing well today. We're gonna to be jumping into my full review of the American Blade Works Model 1. Let's get into it. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna go through size comparisons, we're gonna do a weight on the knife, and then we're gonna jump into my thoughts and impressions. So let's kick it off with a couple of comparison knives. First, we're gonna bring out the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here the American Blade Works is a little bit larger, and then we'll bring out the Spyderco Shaman, and the Shaman is actually gonna be just a skosh larger as well. So this one here, medium flexing onto the larger size of knives, which I like for the size of this one, especially, we'll jump into that actually in a minute. I'm not gonna jump ahead of myself. Next up, we're gonna bring out the Spyderco Sage 5, in case you're more familiar with this one, another one that's comparable to the pair of three, but a little bit different size. And then we're going to bring out the TRM Atom. And the Atom and the American Blade Works Model 1 are very similar in size. You do have just a skosh more length out on the blade due to the blade shape, but the handle is about the same as well. All right, let's go ahead and move the Sage 5 out of the way, and we'll bring out a budget knife comparison. We're going to bring out the Devo Knives Pony Stout. I like this one for a size comparison because it is a sub 3 inch knife, whereas the other two were 3. This one coming in at 2.87, I think. Uh, my editor will have to correct me on that. And then a full size budget knife is going to be the Civivi Praxis. And you can see the Praxis is definitely coming in more blade length, but very similar handle length. So hopefully that's a good point of reference. Since the is comparing more closely to these larger knives let's do the profile comparison with those Whoop. let's try that again and you can see here coming in at about the same thickness as the Civivi Praxis and we'll bring out the Shaman and the Shaman you can see here I would say that's about yeah I'd say that's about even it's really close really really close um, the TRM Atom is going to be thinner, and I think that's going to be comparable to the Bug Out. That contoured scale does get it a little bit closer, but it is much more, well, it is thinner, not much more thinner. It's just thinner. All right, let's check the weight on the American Blade Works. The American Blade Works, I think this is three. Four ounces. Okay, a little off there. Coming in at four ounces. A little hard to tell with all these weight uh, knives on the table. The weights on them are very, very different. So let me move that to the side. Get that out of the way. Sorry, I'm moving crap around in the background. All right, let's jump into the knife. First and foremost, I really love the fact that you can pick up this American-made knife starting at 200 bucks. That's a great price for USA manufacturing with premium steel coming with the magnet cut, which was, if I recall correctly, 63.5, or I guess he ranges it 63, 64. I'm just kind of splitting the difference. Really good heat treat on the magnet cut, and it came with a really nice edge. A great sharpening choil. Now this one's a little unique because it does have milled finishes on the blade to get it to its edge as opposed to a belt. So you do see the lines where the milling machine comes down but it's nice and smooth. They did a good job because you can barely, I would say barely feel the ridging on it as it goes across and it has a great factory edge. The Warncliffe shaped blade is really good for utility. It's really well done. And you can kind of feel again where it steps down through here because it's all done with a machine and with the milling. So really good job there. Ergonomically, this knife is super comfortable in hand. You have nice contoured scales, nice thickness to them. They are radius so that you can actually have very soft edges no matter where you're checking on the knife. You also have these milling lines that go across here for extra texture and grip on the Ultim, and I imagine that the G10's probably the same way. I don't know if he offers it in Micarta or not. I don't know if he's working with that type of material, but I like that because it does offer gripping without it being so aggressive that it's gonna saw in and out of the pocket. 
The other thing I like here too is the position of that flipper tab does allow for a little bit of a trigger pull. So I'm able to kind of choke up on the knife and move that thumb out for that detailed work without having to worry about being too close to the blade's edge. Generally, if I'm doing detailed work, it's not an aggressive type of cut. It's usually that I'm trying to be very careful or cautious with how I'm using the knife. And then when I go back to the aggressive position, I fall in right behind that pocket clip nice and snug. And I'm able to get a really good purchase on this one for those type of push cuts. The blade has so much edge on it that I actually just kind of use it towards the middle. And then I just kind of use my thumb to help keep the blade in the path that I'm guiding it through on those more power oriented cuts. Very interesting with the hardware. If I recall correctly, I think this is T9, and I think these are all T7. Not quite sure why the decision to go against the rest of the industry with those, but it's not that big a deal. I actually had it because I had bought the complete Weha set, so I had the 7 and the um, 9 laying around anyway. Very in easy construction. Everything is going into, is this a steel? That's one thing I didn't forget, I remember to check. Yeah, I think it is a steel backspacer. Titanium pocket clip. Definitely a steel backspacer. So, uh, And that's what I was going to say. The threading goes into the sp backspacer. Very easy to disassemble, reassemble. I took this one apart, cleaned it, reassembled it, and it was no issue at all. You have good access to the lock bar. Nicely knocked down, but it doesn't impact the ergos. So you do feel... The jimping here, which I like because if you do it European style and you come in from the top and slide it over, it's nice. But if you do like to let it fall shut a little, no issues there either. You just come in low on this lock bar, let it drop down until it touches the thumb and you're past the uh, ramp because there is a ramp on this one. And also to lift up and close, no issues with that either. So I like that lock bar access. My one complaint about while we're here on the knife is that it does have a little bit of lock stick. You do have lock up coming in at about 25, 30%. I think as the lock bar moves over, it probably will clean up whatever is not engaging properly and that'll go away. I've tried to dry it out. I tried to put a little bit of lead there to see if it would help get rid of it. And I think ultimately what it is is that the whole lock bar isn't coming over so it's not it's not laying completely flush against it. i think once it wears down and breaks in a little bit more it'll lay flush and i could force it to do that but i'm getting ready to send this back out on pass around um this is my knife now i did go ahead and talk Kevin into letting me purchase this one but I, I told him I would honor the pass around and send it around so I am sticking a note in there to everyone out there that is going to be getting this this is my personal knife and I really like this one so I'm going to ask to please be kind with it um, and that when I get it back I intend to if the lock stick hasn't gone away by then I intend to send it back to American Blade Works just to let them look at it and you know they have a good warranty and they have a pretty quick turnaround I think they'd be able to adjust it just you know working it a little bit more flat and letting it come over just a little bit more normally I don't like to prematurely wear down the lock bar I like to let it do it on its own and it may do that in the past round um, but I am gonna send that to him the washers are stainless steel caged ceramic bearings which is really not that big a deal stainless steel shouldn't corrode unless you're gonna get wet a ton when it comes back through, I might actually check because I want everybody to experience it in its factory form, which is why I didn't throw skiffs in here. But I'll check the size and everything for that when it comes back, especially if the if the lock stick has gone away. And it's a very, very minimal amount of lock stick. It is not a ton of lock stick. I really don't have any type of issue with it whatsoever. Um, I honestly don't even know if it really would be worth going back because I think it's on the verge of going away because it's just so subtle. It's such a subtle hint. Um, and I really like this model a lot. The pocket clip's well done, goes in and out of the pocket nicely. It does have enough ramp. Um, and you can tell like all of this looks like it's machined in house, but it has enough of a ramp coming out of the pocket so that it doesn't catch on any of the hems of my pants that I've tested it on. And it goes in really nicely. And it's just 
it's a very comfortable, very simple design that works really well. I like it a lot. I think the only thing I would probably ask is if he could do a thumb stud variant. Um, Cause this one here, if you catch under the, and I think that's part of uh, how the machining's done on the blade, you can catch this and reverse flick it. So I think it would work really well as a thumb stud knife and get rid of that flipper tab. And then you would have this whole piece here um, to make that work. I think that would be really cool, especially if he can machine the thumb studs, which I don't know how difficult that would be. Um, but if he could mach machine those in house, that would be really cool because then you could reverse, reverse flick from up top and thumb flick from up top and get rid of the flipper tab or heck if people like the flipper tab, do both. Um, I think the only disadvantage to doing thumb studs, is it could potentially end up a little bit in the blade path on this knife. And honestly, that really wouldn't bother me because there's so much blade path here. I really like this. This is really well done. It is from a single person or a very small company that is doing this in their shop here in the USA. All USA made. Great price. You can probably look for TRM if you wanted alternative recommendations but they also equally are hard to get because they're a small manufacturer still so their inventory like american blade works is kind of in and out of stock but the atom would be a good one that would be comparable it doesn't have the worn shape but it does have a serious drop to the point so that works really nicely and then other usa alternative recommendation is going to be the spider co shaman a little bit more readily available and um priced comparably i think you can get this one for 230 this is 200 this is going to start out at 200 with their g10 variant so they're all very competitively priced for usa made knives that are hard used hard-working knives that are going to come with a premium steel uh, or a super steel a premium super steel and they all have fossil bronze washer actions on the alternative recommendation so if you're more in a dirtier and climate dirtier environment they're going to be less susceptible to dirt and debris getting into the pivot and affecting the action but it's not going to affect the performance of the knife if your bearings get dirty if you're on a budget i really do like i brought it out here for a reason i really do like the praxis ergonomically i like 9cr 18 mov it is very wonderful entry level premium steel that is going to do a good job holding edge going to be very easy to maintain and strop between uses so you don't have to worry about sharpening it but it's going to be easy to sharpen and it's going to be corrosive resistant so it's a really great steel that you can get this knife here you can get the praxis with g10 for 40 bucks and ergonomically really nice you got a lot of positions here so for my folks that are on a budget um, that's a really nice option or if you're thinking about something about the size for a gift to get someone in the game the practice is a great option ultimately i recommend this knife i really like it i've enjoyed my time with it and i need to get it out of here after today's video to get it back into the pass around so i'm going to go ahead and ship that out but let me know what you think about american blade works now they do offer the drop point um, they also have the model 2 which is a little bit smaller i prefer the model 1 for larger hands very friendly for larger hands all right guys i'm out of here shout out to everyone that leaves the likes that is subscribed and leaving comments on the regular i appreciate you guys i love you i hope you have a fantastic week and until next time peace